It is a great, great honor and a privilege to be here, all of us, to witness what God has done in bringing together this couple on this very special day. God is going to uh, do something amazing in bringing, giving to you a special gift that will unify the two of you to become one. And look at all of these people. Take a, take a look at all of your friends. <laughs> they love you very much. And uh, they know that you belong together. We are all blessed really, truly blessed to call you all family and friends. And Andrew, I don't know if you've realized yet, but not only have you married into an extremely large extended family, but an entire town as well. So on behalf of them, I would like to welcome you to Fairfield, Montana, the malting barley capital of the world. coming. I know a lot of people came from far away. We have somebody from New York, California. Our friend Lindsay came all the way from Hawaii. Uh, I also need to thank my parents. When I told them I wanted to have a rehearsal dinner here, they didn't seem too thrilled about the idea. So uh, I know it's been a lot of work and I just really appreciate it. And this is everything I pictured. It's beautiful. And we're Jack and Cheryl. I want to thank you guys. I'm very excited to be a part of this family soon. You guys have opened your house up to me from the beginning, and I have always felt at home. And I'm very also excited that you guys get along so well with my parents. <laughs> I know some of you guys have heard this story. I kind of want to talk about the first time Andrew and I met. We met one night at a bowling alley, and I could tell Andrew was pretty, he was nice and he was tall, so that was good. We didn't get to know each other too well, but he walked me out to my car and he asked if it was okay if we, he called me sometime and I said, well, okay. So luckily I said yes, because as soon as he pulled out his phone and I saw the background on his phone, it had Grizz on there. I said, oh, you're a Grizz fan. <laughs> and all he said was, uh, just a little. When Andrew was playing for the Grizzlies, I would sit and watch him on TV and watch him during the games and I thought, wow, this guy can come out and really light it up. So when I would talk to my friends from Missoula and we're big Bob or Luton's Grizzly fans, I asked him, I said, well, what's the deal? It seems like when that Selly guy or that Selly boy comes in, every time he's in there, he lights it up. I said, why not keep him in there? And uh, so the reason that it, I, I share that story is because that Selly boy and that Selly guy is a Sell and he's my future son-in-law now. When I first heard that Andrew and Amanda were dating, the first thing they told me was she went to Carol. And having married uh, Carol Girl myself, I knew just how awesome she'd be. But we Sells are not an easy family. There's uh, the Christmas time at my parents' house, which most people think of as Bull Week basically football every day uh, and then there's well the really really hard part about our family is that we're Grizz fans. I want to take you back to one fateful swim day weekend and all of you that are are not from Fairfield and I'm sorry that you're not but stick around next weekend swim day in Fairfield great time anyway so Amanda was home and it was right early along in their relationship and I figured I had gotten Amanda drinking enough that you know we could talk about things and I said oh how how are things with Andrew and she said it's not gonna work we're too different and I said well Amanda really you have to let this whole Grizz thing go I mean he can't help it he can't help it. That's that's not his fault. I mean, you just gotta let it go. And she said, no, 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 that's that's not it. And I said, well, what, what's going on? 
he doesn't like vegetables. I went to his house and he made me dinner and he did not serve any vegetables. And I said, well, okay, one, have you not lived with our dad for the past 26 years because he hates vegetables? And two, let's back up to this whole thing where he made you dinner? Yeah, you should probably keep him. I think the first night that things really got to be a lot better was Andrew's really good at one-liners. So I have this story. We were hanging out and we're just having a fun conversation just chatting and all of a sudden Andrew just kind of like grabs his shoulder and he's just like oh god and I was like oh my gosh because I'm a nurse so I was like what what's going on like wh what what just happened everything was fine he's like oh it just hurts and I was like what hurts like you have to tell me use your words and he's just like well it just hurts it hurts where you hooked me <laughs> actually really hooked me. So December, we were driving to my friend's wedding in Kalispell and we were talking, we were driving through, we lived in Billings and we were driving through Missoula and we're just like, God, how awesome would it be if we lived here? And I was like, you know what? Yeah, because I'm not too fond of Billings, so let's move, let's do it, let's do it. And so, you know, things worked out. He was able to uh, get a coaching job in two weeks later in January. So we were moving and I could not be more excited. So. A couple weeks into January, Andrew took off for a new job. We sold our house two weeks later. I took a job in February, so I moved in February. And then March, I started my new job. May, we bought a house. Last week, we moved into that house. And now we are here today. And so everyone says that the first year of marriage is the hardest. And I just have to say that we've gone a lot in just the six months of being engaged. We've started new jobs, we've moved to a new town, and so I think we're going to do okay. This is really hard, but I just have to let Andrew know that really when we met, you brought me back to life. And I just have to thank you for that. It's been quite apparent to me the kind of man Andrew's grown into, and I couldn't be more proud. Uh, you know, I've seen Andrew through a lot of the, uh, the good times, and apparently I've missed some really good ones, but today I think of today as the, the best of times. Uh, 
uh, Amanda, I just want to say, uh, welcome to the family. Keep working on those vegetables. <laughs> well, we'll see how it goes. Rosie's still working on me. We'll see. I remember when Andrew called called me and said, uh, Mike, he, he says, I want to uh, have your blessing and ask my daughter's hand in marriage. And I thought, wow, what that was awesome. And I was very impressed with that. And it was great upcoming coming and you too. So thank you very much. And you were I was very impressed with that. Uh, show character. And that, and I said, of course, by all means, uh, but when you do it, don't surprise her. She might not these surprises are not good for her. So when Amanda and Andrew met, I knew that Andrew was something special. First and foremost, because Amanda answered the phone when he called. Her own family had to leave message upon rambling message, text messages in order to receive a call back. But here came Andrew with his tall stature and that grin that he has. And all of a sudden, Amanda was up out of her chair on the second ring saying, Hi. It was then that I knew Andrew was special. And Andrew, you are special. You, you are kind, you are sweet, you are funny, you are patient. You, as my sister said yesterday, you truly brought her back to life. And for that, I am so thankful to you. And you are everything that I prayed my sister would find in a husband. And I am so happy, proud, excited to call you a brother. Amanda, you are the best sister a girl could hope for. You are the yin to my yang, my better half, my voice of reason, my reality check, my biggest cheerleader, the person I laugh with, the person I cry with, and sometimes I think the only person who really gets me. this to complain about is one of the first persons to hold Amanda when she was born I looked at her and thanked the Lord for what a beautiful child we have and I just sat back and I and I couldn't get over it and I finally I, I just decided to make another prayer and I said Lord Make her like her mother, and he did. She is loving and giving and so good and so kind. Then I realized later on in life, I was kind of left out after that prayer. So I said, Lord, make her like me, and he did. She could drive my truck at 10, swear like her dad, a temper like her dad, stubborn, opinionated, hard-headed, and then I said, Lord, stop. We got, this is going too far. We, you've got too many of this. Let's stop. So I said, Lord, make her like you. And he did. He gave her a desire to save people and to heal people. So she became a nurse. She helped people who needed care. And sadly, she has watched people breathe their last breath. But I also said, Lord, make her happy. And he did. And she met you, Andrew. You see this look on her face? I've never seen this look until she met you. And I thank you for that. Now today is the day of all fathers look forward to but it's also a day when a father such as me has a big lump in their throat knowing that they have to give their daughters away but it's the circle of life and she's moving on to a to a good life and somebody that i trust today janet and i give you one of our best things that we have but i want you to know how hard janet and i and the lord worked 
to get her to this point. I can see in your folks the love that they have. And I know, you, I know Amanda's folks very, very well. And they give to one another, and you can see that that's the result. It's beautiful, you know? And if I got to know you better, I would, be, I would find the same thing, wouldn't I? Yeah. So you got great examples. Your folks put tools in the toolbox for you. You already know how to do it. I keep reflecting on my baby got married. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> so I look back and I think, wow, the best decision I ever made was to marry my lovely wife, Cheryl. So we decided to have a couple of kids. We raised them. I could bore you to death how beautiful that was. A lot of you people were part of that. Thank you. Five years ago, my big son here made the best decision of his life and married his lovely wife, Rosie. And today, Andrew made his best decision and married his lovely wife, Amanda. I'd like to thank all the families, Mike and Janet, you guys have been so incredible to me and the rest of the Henning and Coons clans that, that you guys have just opened your arms uh, to me the entire time and I thank you guys for that. Nothing I say will do justice to how much I appreciate everything that you have done for Amanda and I, me our entire life, Ken, all of us guys, um, I can't, I just, words would not do justice to thank you guys, so thank you. Jack and Cheryl. When the Lord makes two become one, the couple has to participate in that. It doesn't just happen, poof, as soon as I stand up here and I say, do you take one another? And you say, oh yeah, we do. Okay, all right. It's not like, poof, okay, we're one. No, it's an ongoing experience of growing to fall more deeply in love with one another and to grow in that commitment. You have to let the Lord be the one who is that glue Okay? It can never ever be about what am I getting out of this relationship. It has to be what more can I give to this relationship, right? What more can I give? If you start to say what am I getting out of the relationship, it becomes all about you. And then you place expectations on your partner that are unrealistic. So you don't want to go into that crazy thinking. You got to think from the perspective of how much more can I give? And I know I'm not going to live up to my beautiful wife. Boy, that's weird. To my beautiful wife's speech last night, those of you that got to hear that, but um, is we have been through a lot in the last six months. She's, she's reminded me this week through some of the tougher times that the guy has the easy role. absolutely true I she's pulling her hair out and, and I'm spending a little bit of time on the river I'm doing some fishing so she's she's a hundred hundred percent right and so the last thing I want to do is is thank my beautiful wife she has put so much blood sweat and tears into this entire weekend and this entire wedding for the last year and I and I went ahead and put a, a lot on that with the move and everything else and can you guys not agree, is this not a beautiful deal? I mean, come on, this is, this is incredible. So, thank you. For, I appreciate everything that you have done. I am so excited, I cannot wait to start our lives together. I, Andrew, take you, Amanda, to be my wife. I, Andrew, take you, Amanda, to be my wife. 
I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you. I will love you and honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I, Amanda, take you, Andrew, to be my husband. I, Amanda, take you, Andrew, to be my husband. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. Amanda, I am so proud to be your sister and so happy that you have found the yin to your yang, your better half, your voice of reason, your reality check, your biggest cheerleader, the person you laugh with, the person you cry with, and the person who really gets you. 